Good day, I Rapstein of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up for this Monday and this is the 21st of September 2020 at about 6 p.m. Central Time, last day of summer. Tomorrow we officially begin fall. Hard to believe in another eight to ten weeks we're going to be in cold weather in Midwest. Uh, needing jackets all the time, different, but we're still warm right now, not hot, warm. Well, the markets weren't warm today. They got ice cold and they took it on the chin. Late in the day though, again, QQQ and XLK came roaring back to the upside. Most other markets stayed under pressure. And what did this? Well, it's a combination of things. It, it certainly doesn't look as though Congress is gonna pack anything in the way of another COVID bill that the White House and they are going to get it long on. Uh, it, the last bill that's coming out of them now doesn't even include farm aid. I think that that's dead before it gets anywhere with the Republican side. When you look at the COVID situation and seeing that London may, we may wake up in the morning and they're in a two week uh, lockdown. They were very close to it. I didn't hear anything late in the day that they've actually gone ahead with it, but it's just about there. Spain's got the big issue as well. India's got the issue as well. Seeing Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the passing away of her, and now opening up that battle between uh, the president having the right to nominate at least uh, who he wants to be to fill that position and the Democrats saying he's not going to get that through and they're putting all their weight to stop it. Another political fight. Today, I just heard late in the day that uh, Wisconsin, I think it's Wisconsin, is saying that uh, they're ruling that uh, ballots can be counted up to six days after November 3rd. Okay, so how are we going to know in any battleground states, if, let's assume other states pass these laws because of all going on, who wins, when they win it, and it brings forth again the president's argument, is this a real election? I'm not on his side about it or against him on that. I get what he's saying. I do understand the need to count all the ballots. It's just wild. That's what you've got. And it was too much for the markets today. We've been weak most of the month of September. We're already at the 21st. Today was just another day where things started off. And if you watched overnight markets, and they're hard for a lot of traders. I'm one of the few people I'll get up sometimes two in the morning, check them like I did last night. And I went, uh-uh, this is not good. And by the time I woke up to do all my research starting at four, these markets were tearing to the downside and I knew it couldn't be a good day for the uh, ETF spider markets. If we take a look, remember we were hoping, at least I was hoping, that you would fill a gap in the chart back here. Tell me what happened. You went down here, you have filled that gap and the market is finding, I didn't say it's found its legs, it found support there. Very important. Gaps often get filled. What is the chart pattern? It's bearish. You have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. That's classic bearishness. What would negate it on the current pattern is taking out 117.30, the last rally high. The resistance in the market, even if you took that out, is just above the market at the 117.89 level, the 18-day average of closes. I call that the line in the sand. And the reason I call it that is because if markets rally to it, it's often a resistance point. When they first break down, it's not uncommon that it becomes on that break a target that could offer the first support level. You can see how you're playing with it. From there, it doesn't have to hang there much, but it often, you'll see patterns that do that, and then it decides which way it wants to continue on with everything that's going through there. So if you continued breaking on just the moving averages, more supports uncounted at 106.50, and then the 200-day average comes in at the 98.18. What about the Bollinger Bands? They're right here at 108 and a quarter. Now, when's the last time we hit a Bollinger Band on XLK? You have to go all the way back here into the July time frame to see it. It's not often. So missing it, wouldn't surprise me. It's the first thing you have to understand is the nature of different markets. The stock market, especially the FANG stocks and things that follow that, have been the strongest sector. And when you break down hard, 
some people like to step in to what used to be the strength and they still think is the best companies for a COVID economy into it. And that, that could be what was happening to a degree today. Is the market oversold? You betcha. You have got both numbers trying to get under 20 today. So they, today they're under 20. They were under 20 on Friday, not the day before. To embed means to lock in and change from oversold to locking in a bearish trend that stays in place until the red line closes over 20 again. You have to get to three days in a row to get it, so tomorrow's a crucial day in this market. We'll see if it wants to embed. It has not done a good job of trying to embed or succeeding for months on end. When we come to SMH, again, a market that is now approaching oversold category. Any readings under 30 that aren't going sideways under 20 are oversold. The trend of the market turned down with today's action. Lower highs, lower lows, resistance at 171.86. The bears, if they want to defend this position, they can't let the market get over 172.18. Downside target could be the lower Bollinger Band at 162.41. But as you can see, it's rare that you hit that lower band. In XLI, we have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. Now you have gone from upper Bollinger Band to lower band in a 24 hour period. That is very unusual. But the trend is down, the bias is down, momentum is down. Look for the pros to be defending or selling at 78.10, which stops over Friday's high, in my opinion, which would be the uh, 80.23 level. So interesting trade. We'll see what they do with that. The energy sector, you got as low today as 31.43. The first time you move away from a Bollinger Band and you fall back to it is where I predict that's where the pros will take some money off the table. You're in a downtrend, wouldn't surprise me, and it's oversold. I wouldn't be surprised if some short covering is going on there. QQQ, it is really rare that this hits a lower Bollinger Band, and it just missed it. Today, I believe that it got about a 10% correction intraday and then snapped back, as you can see. Oversold market in a downtrend. Be interesting to see if it hits that. There's good support between 258.90 and 254.75, but the trend is down. However, it's very oversold and not locked into that downtrend. You have absolutely no trend in the emerging markets, the EFA. You have a higher high, lower and low pattern. So this market today, I believe, stopped out anyone that was trying to hold on here at that 18-day average. The market has been overbought. It has made a run and just missed it up here, as you can see. It's upper Bollinger Band by 10 cents, fell back. Friday holding there, but if you get under the 64.53, there's Friday's action. Well, now you're down. I wouldn't be surprised if you're back into the upper Bollinger Band. You're pretty much in sideways action right here, and I don't see a trend that is set up. The gold has reestablished a downtrend in the short term. It has lower highs, lower lows, momentum just turned down. The market is fighting to get back into the Bollinger Band. I would imagine that we'll see pros trying to sell short at that 18-day average. I don't think they'll want to see prices over uh, the highs that we had just on Friday at 184.09 because that would break the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. Also, keep in mind, you've got this tight pipe, as I call it. These pipes are notorious to churn uh, the heck out of traders. So you think you're getting a breakout with legs, you don't get them. That's pretty much what I'm expecting in this market. Same in the gold miners. You went up to the upside, tried to break out, now you're trying to break out back to the downside, but you're really caught in this sideways action that is just showing, throwing out these short-term I'll become an uptrend or a downtrend after the fact and the move is already made. Very difficult. In TLT, look at how the 100-day average is restraining this market. So we're not trending. We have a lower and low, higher high pattern. Momentum is flat, and you're really just drifting sideways here. Now, tomorrow we get Fed Chair Powell and uh, 
Treasury Secretary Mnuchin speaking, speaking before Congress on the CARES Act and how the lending and all has gone. You know there'll be other questions that come out of this, so you want, might want to look at it. I've already seen the prepared text, and again, Mr. Powell makes it very clear, COVID-19 is a real fear for this economy. It's a real headwind. In FXE, Where'd you go down to today? What do I teach you on the first thing? When you hit an upper band or a lower band, you're looking to, again, see if the pros come out. That's what I think is going on. That's the arrow. You know, we cover all this and a lot more information, even if you're a spider ETF trader, because we're futures people. And as futures traders, one of the things that we're always looking at is the impact on financial markets. One of the big areas that people are talking about this year is to own commodities. That, that seems to be the theme that people are going with, analyst upon analyst that I'm reading now, going into 2021, the year of commodities. I think they're banking on the fact that COVID-19, there'll be a cure or a, a treatment or in some manner control of this. So far, that's not the case. So you get these roller coaster rides, but we cover all those markets. To take a look at the information, it's free. Do so. You get a two week trial to it. We don't keep everybody on these unless they become clients of ours. Go to our website under free offers, you'll see that. And of course, there's a lot more that we have there. Take advantage of it. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow.